Welcome and happy Monday. We are into our third week here of mathematics from your house. Um, <laughs> still your teacher, Mr. Z. All right, here we go. So Monday, today we're doing some scientific notation. There is a near pod up that will be up there shortly for you guys to do. Tomorrow we're going to take a look at expo exponents, angular relationships, functions on Thursday, and there will be another Delta Math review for you guys. Um, I am just grading for completion on those, so make sure you guys are doing them, and I see that though you've completed all sections and get that 100%. All right. Um, and you can check Infinite Campus. I've updated the grades, and we're going to get going to today's lesson, which is on scientific notation. All right. So inside scientific notation, this is a way to write numbers, uh, very either large or small numbers, using powers of 10. Okay, it's a shorthand way to write these numbers. So these are examples, all right, of scientific notation. It is a way to write <clears throat> the product of two factors in the form of a times 10 to the n, where n is an integer, usually in between 1 and 10. It can be bigger or smaller. So it could be negative, positive. Um, for example, 8.3 times 10 to the fifth, which if we remember, we were moving the decimal point five spaces to the right. We'll get into this. So it's eight, three, and then four extra zeros. So this is 830,000 for that number. 7.1 times 10 to the fifth, negative fifth, I would move the decimal point five spots to the left. So that would be four zeros and then a seven one. So if it's a negative exponent, okay, we're shifting our decimal place to the left and positive exponents are moving our decimal place to the right. So you can see like 4.12 times 10 to the 22, I'm going to shift and draw the little loops underneath normally to make this happen here. So um, we're also going to talk about how to do it on your calculator, okay? Um, and this EE button, we talk about how to access that and why we use that instead of writing it like this, okay? <clears throat> so uh, take a look at the first one. Is the number written in scientific notation correctly, yes or no? And if not, explain. So the first one is actually no. Um, it is not. And the reason is, is your number you're writing, right? If we go back up here, we talked about this uh, number A has to be a number between 1 and 10. It has to be a whole number when, with a decimal point after it. So um, you can see this number is 8.3. It's not 0.83. Okay, it can't be less than 1. So this first one is no. Okay, and we would say since 0.23 is not, right, um, <clears throat> greater than 1 or less than 10. All right, the second one would be yes, okay, um, and the third one is also no, all right, since 10 to the 9th, right, is not a factor of 10 a power stop doing it not a power of 10 9 to the <laughs> this is not supposed to be an area is not a power of 10 so it should be 10 to the something or other all right so we want to change a number from standard to scientific notation remember that we're going to place the decimal point such that there is one non-zero number to the digit to the left so the number should be in between 1 and 10 uh, I got a little bubbles running around here. Can you come say hi? Say hi. Hi, <laughs> All right, I'm going to finish teaching, okay? Shh. Get me quiet. Okay, so we're going to place the number so that it is one non zero digit to the left. Remember, that means your number is between one and 10. We're going to count the decimal places that it has moved. And then we're going to decide whether it needs a positive or negative exponent. Remember, we're going to use the original number to determine if it's positive or negative. So when we put it back from scientific notation, say that 10 times fast, back into our original number, should we move it to the right or left here? Okay. So taking a look at the first number, our decimal point is currently sitting at the end of the number. We would like it to go in between the 6 and the 1 so that there's one number, right, non-zero number to the left. And then we're going to go ahead and move it 1, 2, 3, 4 spots. 
Okay, so we move the decimal spots point four spots to the right. So we want a number as 6.15. We're gonna write times 10. And because we moved, in order to get this, this is this number out of scientific notation would be bigger. We want a positive four in the end so that we're gonna get this answer. Okay, on the next one. Right now the decimal point is here. We want it to be here. So we need to move it one, two, three, four, five spots. And remember, this is a smaller number than it's normally going to be. So 5.68, in order to put it back into its standard form, we would need to move the decimal point to the left. So this is gonna be a negative five, all right? So the decimal point is currently up to the one. We need to move two spots. So this is 3.21 times 10. And we want positive two because this number is bigger than one, all right? Six e four million nine hundred sixty thousand remember decimal point at the end we need to move it one two three four five six seven spots so we're gonna put six point and usually usually when we do this now you might want to check the question might say round to the nearest like hundredth when you do this when you so for instance for this number because there's more than three non-zero numbers um, we could write this as 6.496 times 10 to the however many decimals you need. You might also have numbers that only want you to get three significant figures. So it kind of depends on the question here. Um, significant figures are non-zero numbers. So the first non-zero number is the first significant figure. So if there was a zero in front of this, the zero would not be significant. So 6.49, we could call it 6.50. We don't have those directions though, so we're just gonna leave it at 6.496. And it's times 10 to the, and I don't know where the fifth came from there. Um, but we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember we said seventh. So this is times 10 to the seven. And this number is larger than one. So we, we know the exponent is not negative. Number five, same thing. One, two, this is where we want the decimal point to go. Okay, after the first non-zero number, so 7.085, and then times 10 to the negative two. And the reason it's negative is the original number is less than one, all right? <clears throat> Six, now we could write this as 10.123864346876. This kind of defeats the purpose of scientific notation though. So what a lot of times they'll do is they'll take the first three non-zero numbers and they will round, okay? So there's only three significant figures. So the next number is an eight. So we'll put 1.24 and then we have to decide how many decimal points we moved it. So we know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And so I would do 1.24 times 10 to the 11th. We could also do that here since our decimal point is at, um, is currently at after the one instead of after the six. I'm just making sure that this 11 is a little bit uh, better off here. And then the same thing here. So we wanna move one, two, three, four, five, 8.75 times 10 to the five. And the last one here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 moves I wanna make. So 3.45, and because the original number is less than one, we wanna do times 10 to the negative, and I forgot already, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And there's our number. All right, in the next page, we're gonna do some operations. So now, two things. On the calculator, okay, if I wanna do the converting of these numbers, all right, I have to use, let's go back to, I'm gonna change my settings back to normal. So nor, our normal is here. All right, I was messing around with this earlier. So we are gonna go ahead and do this. So you could, for instance, type in something like 10.6, and we could do times 10, um, times, 10 to the negative 5. 
and it will convert this number into you. But notice that it gives you this E thing. So this E, now we did 10.6 instead of 1.06, is the calculator's version of doing scientific notation. So what the E means is it means times 10 to the exponent of negative 4, okay? So if I were to do 10, 1.06, okay, times 10 to the negative 5, the calculator is going to give, is going to give me uh, the same type of thing here. So the decimal point has already moved over one more space, so that's why it's negative 5 instead of negative 4. But you can see that it's giving me these answers back that are with the E, all right? And <clears throat> this is the form we want to use. We don't want to use this. And the reason is this calculator is treating this as two different numbers. 1.06 is one number. 10 to the negative fifth is another number, okay? What we want to do is we want to turn the calculator that when we use the E button, it knows that it's in scientific notation and it treats this as one number. So we'll see it as we go into these questions here on the second page, why there's a problem here, okay? So here we're gonna make these numbers bigger. So let's go ahead and do that. So 1.09 times 10 to the three, we wanna move the decimal point three spots to the right because the X one is positive and we get 109 and then a zero at the end, okay? Same thing with this one, eighth power. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so it looks like we need one, two, three zeros. So four, two, two, seven, one, five with three extra zeros is our number. Here we have a negative exponent. It's the negative fourth power. So we're going to move four spots. One, two, three, four. So we need three zeros. Decimal point goes to the left because it's negative. So point zero, zero, zero. And then three, zero, seven, eight. And the same thing here. It's negative two. So we're moving to the left two spots. So we need one zero and then nine zero zero four. And there is our larger number out of scientific notation. Two more. So once again, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need two decimal places and it's 5.1874 and then zero, zero. Now, you might also notice that it takes one move to get the decimal point in front of the three. So I've already used one out of the nine moves I wanna make. So you can kind of get the idea on the shortcut version here that I need eight more zeros. So you don't always have to do the loop-de-loop -loop thing if you're going to recognize that I'm going to need eight more zeros because it's one move over to the left. So now nine becomes eight. I need eight zeros to finish this off. And then three, five, seven. So the same thing would happen, for example, here. It's one, two, three, four, five numbers. And the number is eight, so I need three zeros, right? Two moves, and this is three, so I need one more zero to make three. You can get that idea, all right? So operation time. So we want to know what is the order. <clears throat> so how do we put these in order, right? Least to greatest. Two things you can do. You can put them all in scientific notation, okay? Um, and then we can compare the exponents and see which is bigger, or you can move them out of scientific notation and compare from there. So we'll do both, okay? So 0 0.047 uh, times 10 to the ninth would mean nine decimal places to the right. It takes us three to get here, so we need six more. So this is 47 with six zeros at the end, okay? And you can see it's 47 million. Here it's 4.17 with seven zeros. So it's one, two, and five more. So one, 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 right, four and seven. One, two, three, four, five. And we can see that this is 341,700,000. So a little bit bigger. Um, nope, smaller actually. 47 million versus 41 million. And this one is times 10. So this just moves one spot. This is 497. And then our last number was 495. So least to greatest, that means we're putting the 495 first. We're putting the 49.7 times 10 next. We're putting the next number is the 41 million. So that's 417, 4.17, I should say, times 10 to the seventh. And the other one we can do is uh, 
the 47 million, which we know is 0 0.047 times 10 to the ninth. Now, if we put them all in correct standard scientific notation, oh, right, this is one. So we're going to move the decimal place one more over to the right. So this would be 4.97 times 10 to the 2. It already wanted, we move the decimal place one more spot. Here, this one is done, so we don't have to change it. This one, would, we would want to move two spots over to the left, which would be a negative, right? So this is 4.7 times 10, right? And we can see that instead of being ninth, it would be 7. And you can see it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So because I'm moving two spots to the left, it says a 10 to the negative 2 to get 4.7. And I already have 10 to the ninth, so that gives me 10 to the 7th. And 4.495 is 4.95. And here I would move it two spots, so times 10 to the 2. And now I could compare. This is smaller. <clears throat> Actually, this is 4.97 is bigger than 4.95, and the exponents are the same. Okay? And then 4.17 is smaller than 4.7, and they have the same exponent. So that's how I know that that's going to be bigger. So you could also compare it in that mode. All right, so same thing, we're gonna order these. So here we can either convert them out of or into correct scientific notation. So I'm gonna do the scientific notation first this time. So this is gonna be boom to do 2.48. Now this is getting bigger, so this is adding a 10 to the first on, okay, because I'm making the number smaller when I put it into scientific notation. So this is times 10 to the negative 3 now. Okay, 28 times 10 to the third, I'm moving it and making it to the left, which is going to increase this because the number is going to get bigger as I go. So this is 2.8 times 10 to the fourth. Here I'm going to move my decimal point in between the 2 and the 5, which is going to become a negative exponent, exponent when I move it. So this is times 10, I'm adding in a negative 2 here. So this is going to be 2.5 times 10 to the 2. And here the decimal point is after the 8. I'm moving it to make it once again a smaller number. So to undo it, it's going to be bigger. So I'm adding a 2 to the x times 10 to the squared. So this is going to be 2.58 times 10 to the negative 3. And now I can go ahead and compare these numbers. All right. So there's a two numbers with a negative three exponent, and the 2.48 is smaller. So we're going least to greatest again. So 224.8 times 10 to the negative fourth is first. Then the 2.58, but it's not 2.58. The original number is what I want to write down, um, not the 2.58 times 10 to the third number. So 258 times 10 to the negative 5. Then I can see the next exponent is a positive 2 here. So that's going to go next. So that's 0 0.025 times 10 to the 4th. And then it's 2.8 times 10. Oh, that's, yeah. This is 28. A little confusing on here times 10 to the third. So I'm, I'm writing these original numbers down when I put my answer in here. Now the other option is to expand this, okay? So I'm gonna do these in order. So number one is this guy right here. So if I expand it, I'm gonna move it four spots to the left, two, three, four, okay? One, two, three, four. So this is point zero, zero, two, four, eight. There's my number expanded out. Number two is 28 times 10 to the third. So that's three moves, one, two, three out to the right. So two, eight, and then three zeros. Number three is four moves, one, two, three, four. So this is really two, five, zero, because I don't include the two zeros in the front. That's kind of weird. <clears throat> and the last number is 258 times 10 to the negative 5. I'm going to move to this point 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spots. So I'm going to need two zeros in front 
So it's 0 0.00258. And now I can compare. So you can see this one right here, I'm going to rank them from smallest to least, is the smallest. This is the largest. Okay. And then you can easily compare here. Um, so we'll call this one, two, three, and four in terms of the order. And you can see that's the order they're in. All right. Operations, we're going to use our calculator here. So we're going to talk about why the calculator uses the EE and it doesn't use times 10 to the seventh stuff here. So we're going to go ahead and do 2.85. Now our calculator, we're going to have to do E and then seven. Okay. And we're going to multiply that times 3.16 E and then negative three. That's what we're going to type into our calculator here. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do, we said, 2.85. Now the E button is right above pi. So how about we put it in the correct spot? So 2.85, we're going to hit E for scientific notation. That's the exponent, 7. Okay. And then we're going to do times, and we got 3.16. So 3.16, go ahead and hit the E button again. And this exponent is negative three. And we hit enter, and the calculator is, is going to convert this for us. Now we want our answer in correct scientific notation. Okay. Now, had we done, all right, and you can see what happened is it expanded it, multiplied it, and then brought it back for us. So what happens is going is this. What we're doing is if we type in the original number, this treats this as 2.85 times 10, just so you guys can get the idea here, caret, and this is going to be the seventh power. And now if I do times again, and that's 3.16 times 10 to the, and I believe this is negative three, you will not get the same answer here. It's giving me errors. Well, it's giving me errors to type two times, but you're not going to get the same. You do get the same answer here. Crazy. Before the old calculators, we didn't. But we're getting it here. Um, and so I'm going to look into this more. And I will come back to you guys and let you know if you are allowed to do this, if it will always work. For our purposes, I want to make sure we understand what E means because the calculator will give you E in your answer here. So we know that this is going to equal 90060, so 90,060. And we need to convert this into scientific notation. So remember, we're going to move one two, three, four spots. So 9.006 and times 10 to the fourth because we want our number to be bigger, okay? <clears throat> so go ahead and do these on your own. You can type them right in your calculator. Make sure you use your fraction bar when you're doing these two and we'll go from there. No, seriously, pause it now and try it on your own. Okay, one thing I did want to go over before we what? move on is talking to students is what is actually going on when you're multiplying here? And what you what you may or may not know is that what you're actually doing is multiplying the numbers in front here together, and then you're adding the exponents up when you're multiplying. <clears throat> so if you look, 2.85 times 3.16 is 9.006. And then we had a decimal, right? The exponent was 7. This one's negative 3. So when you add them, you get to the fourth power. So this becomes 9.006 times 10 to the fourth. So if you look at the next one, if we divide 9.12 over 3.8 is 2.04, and then we do negative five, and now we're dividing, so we subtract six, which gives me negative 11. So this is how you technically are doing this if you don't have a calculator. So in the next one, right, we can do 6.2, times, all right, so we do 6.2 times 3.8, we get 23.56, and then 3 plus 5 is 8, but we need to get 2, so we'll, we'll leave it at that. So 23.56 times 10 to the 8th over 1.9 times 10 to the 4th. So now we divide these numbers. That nine is terrible. It's bothered me. Sorry, guys. 
to the 9 times 10 to the 4th, okay? So we're going to divide this, divided by 1.9, 1 1.9, all right? <clears throat> Gives me 12.4, and then I'm subtracting, right? 8 minus 4 is 4. So this is technically equal to 12.4, 12.4 times 10 to the 4th, but remember, I have to get it as 1.24, and this will be times 10 to the 5th, because I'm moving the decimal point one more spot over. All right? And if we want to, I'm going to type it in real quick. Okay, so we get the 6.2e times 10 to the 3, right? We got 3.8 times 10 to the 5th, and 1.9 times 10 to the 4th. And so you can see when we hit enter, there's our number. So it's 1.24, and we need one, two, three, four, five spots. So to the fifth power, there's our answer, okay? And that's how you can do all of these. It's pretty easy to do. So for the first one, remember, we're multiplying 1.5 times 6.25. So 1.5 times 6.25 is 9.375, 9.375, 4, and negative 3, I'm adding them when I multiply. So this is going to be times 10 to the first, because 4 minus 3, over 1.25 times 10 to the negative 4. <clears throat> so now I divide 9.375 by 1.25, okay? And that gives me 7.5. And then it's... 10 to the 1 minus 10 to the negative 4. So 1 minus negative 4 becomes positive 5. So 10 to the 5th power. That's it. Okay, you can check it under calculator verify. We'll do it right now. Okay, so we go ahead and type it in. Um, and we end up with, and you can see if I undo this real quick, let me see if it'll let me. Okay, so 1.5 e to the 4, 6.25 e to the negative 3. And we get 1.25 e to the negative 4. The calculator may convert it for us. We get 750,000. So we convert it at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 7.5 to the fifth, which is what we said. All right. And then we can do the same thing here. So 5.06 times 8.24. Just double checking is 41.6944. So we'll switch to blue here. Go Bills. 41.6944. And this is times. Now there's 6 and negative 3. So we add that gives us 10 to the third. 10 to the third. Over. And this is 2.2 .2 times 10 to the fifth. So when you subtract, it's going to be 5 minus 3. We're going to get negative 2 for that exponent, okay? So we're going to divide this by 2.2, .2, which leaves us with 18.592. So this leaves us with 18.592. And we said this is going to be times 10 to the negative 2 because it's 3 minus 5. So we get a negative. I forgot to put the 10 down. 10 to the negative 2. Now, we still have to move the decimal point one spot over to the left, which, because this is a number that's bigger than 1, is a positive move. So we're going to add 1 to this exponent, okay? So we're adding a 10 to the first on here. So our answer is going to be 1.8592 times 10 to the first. <clears throat> All right, that's going to be our move. Oh, negative one, negative one. Sorry, it was negative two and we added one, so it was 10 to the negative one. All right, we'll go ahead and check that. We'll see what we, in case we typed it in. So 5.06 times 10, so e to the sixth, 8.24, e to the negative three, 2.2, .2, we have the e to the fifth. So go ahead and enter. We get 1.1 1 .1 or 0.18952, so we would move the decimal point one spot to the right. That would be a negative one, and there we go. All right, the last one we're doing is 8.3 times 6.15 times 10 to the fifth. So what we're going to do is multiply the 8.3 times 6.15. So 8.3 times 6.15. All right, 
which is 51.054, and that 10 to the negative fifth is going to stay with it. So 51.045, and this is technically times 10 to the negative fifth. Now to convert this, we need to move this decimal place one spot. So that's going to add a 10 to the first on, because we're moving it one decimal point to make it a smaller number. So this is technically 5.1045 times 10, and it was negative 4, now it's negative 3 because we added a 10 to the first time. All right, and we can actually do it, so let's go ahead and do it on our own. So 8.33 times, and then it's 6.15 e to the negative fifth. Okay, so 5.1045, 10 to the negative fourth, We got negative three. Oh, I see the error. Do you see the error? We were right. I just wrote down the wrong number here. Instead of this being negative four, oh man, this should have been negative five here. So this should be negative four in the answer. So the math was right. My writing was wrong. There you go. All right, guys, that's it for today. Hope you have a great rest of the day. See you guys later.